So let's talk about the risk of blood clots a little bit. Uh, we talked last time. At the time, we uh, had just started hearing about the risk of blood clots in people getting the AstraZeneca vaccine and the Europeans had paused the vaccines. Uh, we now know quite a bit more. So it seems like the blood clots associated with these vaccines with AstraZeneca and likely with Johnson & Johnson are not the typical types of blood clots you would get from, for example, being on the oral contraceptive pill, the birth control pill, or in people with high blood pressure. This is a different type of blood clot, which is a reaction to the actual vaccine. And it's an immune reaction that causes the problem. Very similar to a concept that we've known for decades now, uh, something called heparin-induced thrombocytopenia or HIT. People who are on heparin, a very commonly used blood thinner, develop an immune reaction to the heparin. They get antibodies to a component of their platelets, which is one of the clotting factors in your blood, which then result in activation of the platelets and clumping, which then result in blood clots. And it seems like this type of immune reaction that is happening with heparin is very similar to the type of immune reaction that is happening with the AstraZeneca vaccine as has been described now in multiple papers that have been published over the last couple of weeks, where you get an activation, you get an antibody reaction, an antibody to what's called platelet factor four in, on your platelets, which result in clumping of your platelets, a reduction in the number of platelets in your blood. So that's what thrombocytopenia is. It means a reduction of your platelet count. And then also the risk of blood clots and the most common place that, that people are seeing blood clots is in the brain, uh, something called sinovenous thrombosis. There are other blood clots in other parts of the body, but obviously the brain one is, is one of the more concerning ones in terms of risk of mortality. However, I think it's important to point out that we also are very well aware and have been for quite a few months now that getting COVID-19 is associated with life-threatening blood clots as well. This is a systematic review of the literature looking at the risk of blood clots and essentially what I found is that the risk of any blood clot is around 21% when you get COVID-19. Uh, and the risk of dying with a blood clot is, so people who get a blood clot, the risk of dying is about 25% compared to 15% for people who do not get a blood clot. So your risk of dying is about 1.74 times higher if you get a good blood clot for COVID-19. So we're kind of talking about balances of risk here, right? You're talking about COVID-19 is fatal, and certainly you can get a blood clot due to COVID-19. However, the adenovirus vaccines, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, may be associated with a risk of blood clot as well. So we now have to start thinking about what's the risk benefit and what are, what's your actual risk if you get these vaccines. And this is a nice uh, uh, visualization or, or sort of risk assessment uh, chart from this Winton Center for Risk and Evidence Communication from the UK. And uh, you know it's based on UK incidence and prevalence numbers of COVID-19, but I think it still holds true in Canada. In Canada, the risk of getting a blood clot, of having this VIT, this vaccine-induced thrombocytopenia, seems to be about one in 250,000 so far. So one person in 250,000 who have gotten the AstraZeneca vaccine will have this VIT syndrome and a resulting blood clot. So that translates to a risk of about four in a million in the UK in people 55 and over, and 11 in a million in people who are 25 and over. Compare that to your risk of dying if you get coronavirus, it's very much lower, especially in the older age group. The risk of dying in an accident or injury is about 10 times higher if you're 25. And the risk of dying in a road accident, obviously in a, in a car accident, something that we, that risk we assume every single day by driving around, that risk is very much higher than the risk of getting VIT from the uh, COVID vaccines. Risk of getting hit by lightning, for example, is about one in a million. So if you're 55 and over, it's very similar to your risk of getting hit by lightning. I think a, a, an even nicer visualization is this is sort of the numbers that was used by the UK to decide that they would not use the AstraZeneca vaccine in people under 30 years old. And what they're doing is they're balancing the risk of having a blood clot from the AstraZeneca vaccine with the risk of you catching COVID-19 and being admitted to ICU for COVID-19 by age group. And you can see that very clearly in anybody 30 and up, the risk of getting admitted to an ICU and potentially dying is much higher than the risk of developing blood clots from the AstraZeneca vaccine. I wanna point out though, that this was the risk in the UK based on March numbers. And that's pretty important. 
because we know that the UK, the incidence and prevalence of COVID-19 has dropped significantly since their peak in February. And in Canada, it's rising in its third wave. So we really have to look at the, the risk, the incidence of COVID-19 in Canada right now being very similar to the incidence, what it was at the end of February in the UK. So we can't really use March numbers for the UK. So let's look at February numbers. And these are the numbers for February. And what you can see is very clearly when your risk, when your incidence of COVID-19 is six per 10,000. And in Canada, at least in Ontario, I think now it's about three and a half per 10,000 per day. Um, your benefit of getting the AstraZeneca vaccine far outweighs your risk of uh, getting a clot from the AstraZeneca vaccine. And that's really important to understand that in the end, even for people 20 and up, most likely, it is a safer vac safer to get the vaccine than to risk getting COVID and being admitted to the ICU and potentially dying. And Ben Chan, I think I, I mentioned some of his work uh, last month, and he's updated some of this work. He's, he's a, an assistant professor at U of T and a global health researcher, epidemiologist, and he posted these numbers for Ontario. They are Ontario and Toronto specific, but you can imagine how they extrapolate to your province. Based on the April 12th incidence of COVID-19 in Ontario, which was there was around 4,400 new cases. Now we're about, I believe, 36 or 3,700 today and 1,300 cases in Toronto. So when he looked at age group 55 and up for the AstraZeneca vaccine, he calculated your risk of dying if you got COVID-19 uh, then your risk of catching COVID-19 based on these numbers here and your overall chance per day of both catching and dying from COVID-19. So these are the numbers by age in Toronto and all of Ontario. And based on that and the incidence of one in 250,000 of getting a clot from AstraZeneca, he calculated what, how many days of waiting for a vaccine before your risk of dying from COVID-19 outweighs your risk of getting a clot from the AstraZeneca vaccine. And essentially it's around two to three days. So if you delay getting a vaccine for two to three days, your risk of catching and dying from COVID-19 outweighs your risk of getting a clot from the AstraZeneca vaccine. So very clearly, and, and if you're over 65, that goes down to about one day. So very clearly, you should be getting the AstraZeneca vaccine if that's what's available to you as soon as possible, because the benefits far outweigh the risks.